Hello, we continue to do the survey of fungi module. Today's agenda will be Neurospora fungi which is coming under Ascomycota. Before we begin, let us see the root map again. Under the fungi module, we have to see Zygomycota, we have already completed it through Rhizopus and Mucor life cycle. Under Ascomycota, we have finished Saccharomyces, Aspergillus, Penicillium and today's agenda will be Neurospora. After that, Pesaisa and Glaviceps remain. Under the Mycota, we have to see Paxinia, Agaricus and Ostilago. Paxinia is very important. Now under Oomycota, we will be seeing the Phytophthora and Albigo. Oomycota is the phylum which is coming under fungi-like organism. Then we will be seeing Lichens, Mycorrhiza, Fungal Toxins etc. like topic. Neurospora is a fungi which is known as Orange Bread Mold. Orange color because of the presence of carotenoids in their body. And Bread Mold because it is infecting bread. Okay. You can see that it is having a multicellular, multinucleated and multi-pigmented thalli. Under carotenoid family, we have many pigments. Those are found here. Then, during asexual reproduction, from one any of the one uh, cell, you can see one particular erect thalli arises which is called conidiophore. And at the tip of it, you can see conidia. Do you recollect that this type of a conidiophore and conidio formation, do you recollect in some other genus of fungi? Let us see that. Let us recollect and compare. Okay. We have seen conidia formation in Aspergillus, Penicillium and now Neurospora. Before that, we have seen sporangiospores, not conidiospores, but sporangiospores in Mucor and Rhizopus. So, what are the similarities and differences? In the case of Mucor and Rhizopus, the spores called sporangiospores were found in a closed sac called sporangia. In the case of Aspergillus, Penicillium and Neurospora, it is formed at the tip in chains. Then, in the case of Rhizopus and Mucor, if you are comparing, in the case of Mucor, from the vegetative thalli, from one single node of the vegetative thalli, only one sporangiophore was arising. In the case of Rhizopus, from one single node, many sporangiophore was arising. See, okay, that is the similarity and difference between Rhizopus and Mucor. Then coming to uh, the structure of conidio 4 in Aspergillus, Penicillium and Neurospora. You can see a vesicle formed at the tip of the conidio 4 from which you can see the metulle, sterigmata, etc. and the conidia. In the case of Penicillium, this globose vesicle was missing. In the case of Neurospora, the conidia is seen to form on the tip of the sporangio uh, on the tip of conidio 4 okay we are not mentioning any metulle or sterigmata like structure okay let us move on neurospora is systematic position as always we begin with its domain eukaryota kingdom fungi or mycota division or phylum ascomycota class sordariomycetes very important order sordariales family sordariaceae genus neurospora you can see how vigorously it is branching okay these are vegetative thalli how vigorously it is branching you can see from one particular thalli another from one, one particular hypha it is branching into other sub hyphas like that so if they are asking about the structure it is a filament, filamentous fungi it is elongating this particular filament is elongating by apical cell division like this it will be elongating and there will be sub branching from the main branch okay now it is one of the fastest growing filamentous fungi. Approximately 10 cm growth is seen in one single day. During asexual reproduction, as I told, there will be an erect hyphae called conidiophore formation. And this is the multicellular, multinucleated and multi-pigmented thallus. Okay. This is about asexual reproduction. I mean, we will we'll see that in detail in upcoming slides. And part of the structure, you have to know why it is called a neurospora. It is called neurospora means literally meaning nerve spore. Now means what? It is like having longitudinal striations. See, these longitudinal striations like nerves. Okay. As in our hand, we have nerves. So, similarly, nerve-like striations seen on the uh, surface of ascospores. That's why it is called uh, neurospora, nerve-like spore. Okay. Then, uh, it is having this particular uh, shape of a rugby ball. Okay. A rugby ball shape. That also you have to mention then orange color due to or pinkish orange color due to carotenoid pigments and it is infecting bread with this orange color then neurospora is 
normally seen on soil surface in papaya surface like in papaya we commonly see uh, this orange type like formation on the surface that is uh, the infection by neurospora and in the forest fire after the forest fire in that burned vegetation on the top of the burned vegetation you can see neurospora which is having a well branched uh, septated mycelium that we have already seen then this hyphae will be growing superficially on the top of the substratum okay just like a mat it will be forming now Neurospora is also called Drosophila of the plant kingdom. So what is Drosophila? Drosophila is the name of fruit fly. In genetics, we will be studying about Drosophila melanogaster, which is a typical fruit fly, which is very easy uh, to study, uh, like its genetic in information, like chromosomes, genes, etc. So it is called, uh, the comparison between Drosophila and Neurospora is that they are having something in common. Both can be generated in a very short time both are both are easy to maintain that means like if you want to generate or if you want to maintain uh, like subsequent generations of fruit fly just cut an apple or orange open and keep it there for some time after that you can see the formation or the occurrence of rosophila so similarly it is having well defined genetics it is having a uh, certain number of genes and you can see the parent to offspring genetic transformation i mean which all genes have been transferred from parent to offspring that is easy to observe in drosophila and both in neurospora neurospora is also having these similar characteristics easy to maintain it can be quickly generated it is having short generation time and the genetics also is very clear so that's why it is extensively used in genetics and developmental research now as a homework write one question why or what is the genetic uh, gen info, like what is the genetic info importance of this neurospora okay why neurospora is seen as an important genus to study uh, under genetics just write an answer on it now coming to the reproduction asexual and asexual uh, mode of reproduction so one unique thing about neurospora is that it is producing two kinds of conidia under asexual reproduction one conidia is the large multinucleated pinkish colored conidia called macroconidia so these are commonly considered as asexual spores okay this will be taking part in asexual reproduction okay then why how it is taking part in asexual reproduction once the conidia is formed on the tip of the conidia for this will be falling apart and that will be generating a new thylake now coming to microconidia microconidia is not uni, not multinucleate like microconidia it is uninucleate and it is having relatively smaller size than microconidia that's why this is called a macro and this is called a micro now this microconidia can take part in sexual reproduction and in asexual reproduction. Let us see. Neurospora crassa. Neurospora crassa, you have to remember this gene, uh, species name. This is one important and common species of uh, Neurospora genus. So Neurospora crassa produces two types of vegetative spores. Relatively small number of uninucleate mic microconidia. As I told, microconidia will be taking part in sexual reproduction by acting like a spermatia or male gametes and in the asexual reproduction or asexual multiplication also uh, this microconidia will be taking part in the case of uh, macroconidia macroconidia will be taking part in the asexual reproduction only normally okay and it is having very large number okay very large number of powdery mass of bright orange colored asexual spores will be produced during asexual reproduction those are macroconidia macroconidia are very bright orange colored powdery mass of asexual spores taking part in asexual reproduction so this is having large number and you uh, microconidia will be relatively small in number okay when compared to macroconidia so this is the, the thing now these are the macro and microconidia if like you need not mention about uh, you need not show the uh, structure of macro and microconidia just mention that in your answer it will be producing two types of uh, sexual and asexual spores that is microconidia and macroconidia then uh, that you can mention and after the asexual reproduction once the conidia is formed on the tip then it can be uh, dispersed by wind okay now both by micro and microconidia form new mycelium on germination as a part of the asexual reproduction this is the chain of the conidia okay so asexual reproduction uh, is through the formation of the conidia 4 which is forming at the uh, from the vegetative mycelium one particular erect branch will be created from one particular cell so that will be forming uh, conidia at the tip of the conidia 4 
so that will be releasing from the body of the conidiophore so that will be multiplying or, or that will be forming or falling on the two uh, or on the suitable substratum that will be forming a new mycelium so that is one thing uh, and now spores in uh, neurospora crassa can serve as nuclear donors in sexual reproduction or develop into independent colonies as in asexual reproduction that means spores these spores microconidia the conidia is also called conidia spores right so these spores which can be taking part in sexual reproduction and independent asexual reproduction that spore is microconidia see this so this is the normal structure of the uh, vegetative thallus and the conidia four in the case of neurospora you see that this is from the vegetative thalli there is a formation of one conidia four another conidia four another conidia four so consider these small conidia called microconidia this microconidia will be shed off from the body of this particular uh, conidia four and that will be either taking part in a sexual reproduction by just germinating into this particular uh, thalli or hyphae again or this microconidia can take part in the sexual reproduction by attaching with the trichogyne of the ascogonium okay that you will see in the sexual reproduction now my macroconidia macroconidia will be uh, large in number and large in size that will be taking part normally in asexual reproduction only so that will be germinating and forming a new thalli okay now let us move and one more thing you have to uh, remember as a part of this vegetative spores that like you you may be wondering like how these two types of spores are formed in or why these two types of spores are formed in this particular uh, conidiophore because at different environmental conditions either there will be formation of macroconidia or microconidia for example in the laboratory condition when we have tested in the culture with nutrient depleted medium okay if there is no sufficient nutrients and there is high humidity at that time there will be the formation of microconidia and not macroconidia so in the environment if conditions are uh, like conditions like nutrient is not there and high humidity conditions are prevailing then there will be formation of microconidia so that point also you can rem remember so this is about asexual reproduction i have already explained now coming to sexual reproduction you can see that this is the vegetative thalli this is very easy okay there is a formation of a conidium within a closed structure called protoperithecium so we will be seeing the perithecium is the ascocarp of this particular neurospora uh, genus and within within a closed body called the perithecium there will be the oogonium okay the oogonium and from the oogonium there will be these particular uh, structures called the trichogyne which are formed okay this trichogyne will be receiving the spores from uh, different thalli okay different thalli it will be receiving spore we will be seeing in the upcoming uh, slides okay just see this okay this is one strain of neurospora this is another strain of neurospora from the conidia of a different strain it has uh, the conidia has fallen on the trichogyne of another thalli from from this thalli you can see this has reached the trichogyne of another thalli now after this after this crow like uh, reaching of trichogyne uh, after this uh, reaching of conidia in the trichogyne you see this image this image i have taken uh, just to show you how this particular ascogenous hyphae is formed so once the uh, fusion of antheridium here the antheridium is what the conidia ascogonium is what this oogonium okay this oogonium okay once it is fusing there will be the formation of plasmogamy why the transfer of multinucleate conidia from the uh, one particular thalli to the multinucleate oogonium of another thalli okay multinucleate this conidia is multinucleate right so that will be forming that will be transferring its content to the oogonia now the positive and negative strains or different nuclei will be pairing up and resulting in the formation of ascogenous hypha now the tip of the ascogenous hypha there will be fusion of nuclei that will be the formation of zygote now from this after the zygotic formation you can see this thing okay after the formation of zygote you come to this image so this is the zygote formation then there will be crozier formation we have explained beautifully in the previous videos there will be crozier formation and from the crozier formation there will be mitosis and meiosis that will be taking place okay mitosis and meiosis taking place okay uh, okay actually you have to move from here okay at the tip of this particular uh, like thalli there will be the formation of a crozier from their zygote and from the zygote you can see the formation of ascospores okay the ascospores will be contained within 
a structure called ascii this ascii will be contained within the perithecium now this ascospore will be liberated